everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Erica from Confessions of a Homeschooler and I'm back today with another Tip Tuesday video for you. Now last week I talked about how I organize all of our teachers supplies, my manuals, and some record keeping tips. So if you missed that video you're probably going to want to go check that out. Today we're going to be talking about how I keep my students supplies organized, where I put all their workbooks, and how I just kind of keep everything flowing. So I'm going to do just a quick little kind of overview of our homeschool room to show you where I keep things and how I keep them easily accessible for my kids and how we organize all of their work. So let's take a closer look. So here's kind of a wide angle view of our homeschool room. As you can see, we have this nice big desk in the middle. And if any of you are interested in seeing how I set up this desk or what the parts are um, to put it together, I'll link that post below. I have a detailed explanation of how we put these together. Everything is from Ikea, um, so that makes it really nice and easy. They have held up really, really well. I was worried about the white to begin with, but they are um, working out great. And the system has worked out really well for us as well. We have four kids. And so as you can see, there are four chairs around this table and it works out really well. Now over here in the far corner is my teacher's desk area and that's where we keep our computer as you can see. I also keep extra supplies and I um, have my homeschool tracker on one of those computers and so everybody turns their finished worksheets into me as they go or workbooks or whatever projects they're working on and then I can grade them and do everything right there from my teacher's desk. As you can see on our wall we also have the calendar and all of that kind of fun stuff. Now taking a closer look at my desk setup, each one of my children has one of these drawer units. These are from Ikea and they're the Vika Alex drawer units. And they each have five drawers in them and so that is where I keep most of their work. So let's take a look and see what is in um, our work boxes. Alright, so I want to talk about my work drawers um, just a little bit. If you're new to my channel and you haven't seen how we organize our school supplies, we use all of these drawers to kind of keep all of our subjects separate and I keep all of my kids work in here. Now everybody has their own set of drawers and they face um, outward all the way around the outside of the desk. So everybody's setup looks just like these and I find that it's a great way to keep all of their work in a row. They know what they have to do and they just kind of work their way down their work boxes. Now this is mostly independent if we do any group subjects or anything like that, that won't be included in these drawers. And my oldest student, I haven't pulled out our bookshark reading yet, and so they're not in her drawers at this time either. But I wanted to just kind of explain how she uses those. So when she comes into school in the morning, she opens her top drawer, and I'll show you in detail what's inside of these drawers as we go. But she'll have her daily agenda in there, and it lists everything that she has to do for the day, and she's got a little highlighter, and she just starts at the top and just starts marking them down and it tells her you know what worksheet to do or what pages to read or what assignment to do or whatever it is for each subject and so it's really easy for her to just kind of go down her drawers and pull out something from each drawer as she goes throughout her day and just work all the way down she knows as soon as she's done with this drawer she hands it in she closes it she goes back to the next one and so on and so this is just a really easy way I found to organize their materials it makes it really easy for them to work down through their subjects now because there's only five drawers and she obviously has more than five subjects I have them um, kind of uh, stacked up in here. So she's got two subjects in almost all of her drawers right now and that's just to make them all fit and whatnot. Now if you saw one of my really old workbox videos we used to use the 10 drawer rolling carts from Joann's. I've also seen them at Costco and those are a great option. We don't have room for those in our room now and so these are great because they also um, they don't take up any space because they're holding up our desk and so they're kind of a great option for us at this time. So let's take a closer look and see what's inside of her work drawers just to kind of give you an idea. And again, like I said, any group activities won't be included in here. Um, if she does get to something where it's a, a subject that I'm teaching her, then she just lets me know when she gets there. And I kind of, um, I've done a post on how I teach multiple grades, but I kind of try to alternate what's in their boxes so that I'm not having to teach two people at the same time. Sometimes she may have to wait in that, in case, like if I'm helping someone else. If that's the case, then she just moves on to her next drawer, and then as soon as I'm done with the other, um, you know, our other sibling, then I can just come back and we can move back up to her drawer and, and get through whatever teaching we need to get through. So let's take a look and see what she has in her boxes. All right, so in the top drawer, they're all basically similar. All of them have one of these drawer divider um, organizers, and they're actually expandable and contractible to fit whatever drawer you need. These I got from the container store, and if you just Google, I'll try and link them below, but if you just search for clear acrylic, um, or acrylic expandable drawer organizers, you should be able to find them. And they just hold all of their supplies that they need. And then underneath their, 
this is Strawberry Shortcake drawers. She likes to keep her extra art supplies in here, just kind of tucked underneath there, and that keeps them from, you know, getting used by siblings and whatnot. So that's that. Um, and then she also keeps her Bible in here as well, and she has a pair of glasses. And I'll do another, I'll do a more of a close-up on her Bible um, in a separate video, but we're really liking those. Her second drawer has all of her math stuff. So she's got her algebra decimal inserts and then her workbooks. And she's also got her test booklet down there. Now, um, we haven't started school yet this year, but if we had, I would have her worksheet pulled out. And I have found that I, it's pretty easy. I just pull out all the worksheets for the week and I just stack them on top and she just pulls off the top one. So that makes it really easy for her to go through um, and get through her work. The next drawer down is her spelling you see, and she's working on the G level. And then we are also trying fix it grammar this year. And so that's in this drawer as well. And I will do a review on this once we use it a little bit. We haven't started yet. Hoping it will be good. And then the next drawer down is her history. And we're doing a little bit something different with her this year. We are having her do her history independently. She is going to be in eighth grade. And so this is the time of the um, about sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. I really start giving them a little bit more independent work. I think it's really important. I'll talk about that in kind of a separate video because we are changing up how we do school this year. But she'll have her own studies in here and she'll be responsible for doing those on her own. And then in her last drawer, she also has her science and her writing. And keeping all of her work in her drawers like this is a great way to keep her organized and flowing through her work without having to ask me what's next and all of that kind of stuff. All right, so this is my wall that's kind of behind my door. You don't probably see it all that often, but I do have a rather large whiteboard, as you can see. Ignore all of the um, comments on there. My daughters are playing a game and it's summer, so they kind of have free reign of that. Um, we also have our world wall map over here and it has all of our flags. I may actually leave this up because we're going to be doing some more world geography this year. It's kind of fun to see where we studied already and um, just have it up for reference. Then below that is a smaller whiteboard and I actually do use that for my youngest. Um, we do all of her phonics works and she writes down um, any sight words and things like that that she's working on. And I do like to kind of keep that separate from our main whiteboard because for that one, I'm usually having lots of English, history, science information, that kind of thing, and I just kind of like to be able to have those separate so she can leave her word list up. Everybody knows not to erase it, and that's kind of just her whiteboard. So I do have two on this wall, but we do use them. All right, and then over on this far wall is my teacher's desk, as I mentioned already, with our calendar, and then um, my, IKEA, my IKEA bookshelves, and I do store a lot of our books that either um, we are you know, going to be using, we haven't started using yet, a lot of manipulatives and just kind of extra things like that. Most of the curriculum we're not using, I do store in my basement just to keep it out of here, um, but there's a couple things that I'll keep up here if I think we might go through it during the year. Here's kind of a view of the other side of it. As you can see, I have our all about reading and spelling levels up there. I kind of like to keep these up here because we go through them um, at a different pace depending on the student. And sometimes if they're ahead, I'll pull out the new readers and that kind of thing. And I also like to keep um, all of my classic literature units and scientist units and artist units up here because I a lot of times will let my kids choose what they want and they can kind of do their own unit at this point. And so I just like to have them up here. They can look through and see what their options are. All right, and then down here on these bottom shelves, like I mentioned, I do have these black, oops, sorry. I do have these black bins down here, and they hold extra games, puzzles, things like that. Um, and then the plastic containers, which I mentioned in my last video, and they hold things like dice, blocks, pattern blocks, um, beads, stuff like that. So as you can see, I just kind of keep all of our stuff organized in my IKEA shelving over there. All right, and then here's our other corner of our homeschool room, and that's where the birds live right now. And they're on another small little IKEA bookshelf. And over there, I keep things like construction paper, cardstock. Um, you know, transparency paper, things like that. We also have um, our Bibles down there and a few other little kind of fun art books. All right, so here's our birdies up close. I know I've had a lot of questions on them and they are being quiet right now, but, oh, nope, I guess they're not. Um, they're actually pretty loud, so we're kind of used to having them in here. They definitely liven things up. Um, and they like to kind of fly around their room. So right now they're on the top of their cage. All right, so that's how I keep all of our student supplies organized. I hope this video is helpful for you. If you have any questions, you're always welcome to email me at erica at confessionsofahomeschooler.com. And I hope you enjoyed this Tip Tuesday, and I will see you for the next one.